Have you ever lied about your age? Hey there everyone, welcome back to Breakfast at Tracy's where we attempt to serve up a hearty spiritual breakfast in about five minutes. We are in the Truth Be Told series, diving into the murky waters of this precious thing we refer to as truth. This week we have seen some of the reasons we are told in the Bible why people will lie. Personal gain, money, corrupted consciences, gullibility, and today we are wrapping up this part of the series with one final reason people lie. You might have caught the story a few years ago about a 69-year-old Dutchman who began the legal process to be declared 20 years younger. Emile Rattleband was quoted as saying, you can change your name, you can change your gender, why not your age? Nowhere are, you more so, nowhere are you so discriminated against as with your age, end quote. But you may ask, what would be the point of lying about your age? What would be the advantage? Not only did he think it would increase his chances of getting a job, after all, he said he felt 20 to 25 years younger than he is, but he'd also have a better shot getting girls. He said, if I put on Tinder that I'm 69, I will not get a response. As at 49, with that face of mine, then I'm, well, I can't finish the rest of that quote for the sake of family friendliness, but needless to say, he thinks it would make quite a difference to lie on Tinder. Lying in order to follow our desires is a temptation we all face. It was, it was faced in the birth of the church as well. Paul writes to Timothy, a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. Paul is saying that lies will become accepted, will become normalized, as we gather around us, people who teach us what we want to hear. The truth? Oh, that's old and stuffy. We like the things that allow us to follow our desires, our wants, our emotions, our wishes. Teach us more about that, will you? I will admit, this feels like a synopsis of our times. It doesn't matter if the subject is sex, sexuality, gender, money, drug use, abuse, or any other controversial subject, we tend to gravitate toward the people who tell us what we want to hear. We listen to the news that leans our way. We follow people on Twitter and Instagram who hold our same views. We unfriend people on Facebook who challenge us or have differing opinions. We go to the church that tells us things that feel good and don't challenge our presuppositions. We'd rather change churches than explore if we could be wrong. If itching ears were a problem in Paul's day, one could argue that we have a full-blown pandemic of moral ear infections going on today. But this goes deeper than just what news we choose or what friends we keep. Ultimately, if we do not have a God who can disagree with us, we are not actually worshiping God. Only Jesus ever completely agreed with the Father and submitted completely to his will. You and I? <laughs> we often see things wrongly and God needs to speak, often through others, for our correction, which is for our benefit. If God never contradicts us, never corrects us, it is a sign that the God we believe in is made up. Instead of us being made in God's image, we have made God in our own personal image, a natural extension of our individualistic worldview. Breakfast Club, may our desires not determine what is true as much as God's word. And may we be surrounded by people who love us enough to challenge us and correct us. Let's pray. Our Father, some of us have created such a safe bubble that none of our ideas can be challenged. 
Some of us have chosen what we want to be true and have put teachers around us who only confirm our thoughts. Help us, Lord, to be secure in your love and to be teachable, humble, and open to differing opinions. More than that, may we be obedient to believing what you say is true over our sinful desires. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great weekend, everyone. It is such an honor to have all of you joining in regularly at Breakfast at Tracy's. We look forward to another week next week at Breakfast at Tracy's where we continue on in our series, Truth Be Told. And we will see you then. Take care. <laughs>